I don't know about you, but Thank you for your it's comforting and it's exciting for me to know that His favor is upon me, upon my house, upon my children, upon my generations. Hallelujah. Until the Lord calls us all home together, that His favor goes before us and comes behind us. As we enter into our houses, as we come out of them, He has already ordered our steps. Hallelujah. 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 If you would turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 12. We are here to celebrate communion today. And I would ask that everyone, I'm gonna I'm gonna preach about communion and I'm gonna ask that everyone that can take it without condemnation would take it. You say, why? Well, how do I know? I'm going to teach you how to take communion with the body of Christ without condemnation this morning. Amen? So, chapter 12 and verse 12 says, For as the body is one and has many members, and all are members of that one body. Can you say one body? Being member many are one body so also is Christ for by one spirit are all baptized into one body whether be Jews or Gentiles whether be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit for the body is not one member but many can you say many you may be seated I've spent my, much of my life studying the body, the human body, and I know a lot about it. Do I know everything about it? I, you know, I don't believe that uh, anyone does know, and, and I'd like to say welcome to all of our guests. Let's give them a hand today. A couple of very special guests. Two ladies that I served with right back here, Linda Green and Deborah Ogden. I served with them at the hospital for many, many years. And whenever I say served, they served with a servant's heart. And we served together. And when you serve together, when you go through some tough things together, it, it, it creates a bond. And I'd like to say to, to Linda and Deborah, thank you for being here. It's an honor. Amen. But I've studied the body for most of my life. And I know that the head bone's connected to the neck bone. The neck bone's connected to the arm bone. That's about the extent of my anatomy and physiology. No, I'm kidding. But many members, there are members that we consider very important. You know, uh, our eyes. Our eyes, I consider my eyes very, very important. I try to, I take... Uh, vitamins to take care of my eyes they're very very important and my you know uh at this age my hair's is very important to me um you know there's very important parts of your body your of course your hands i mean if you've ever broken a a, a wrist i had i'm right-handed and i broke this wrist one time and i was in a cast and deborah and, and linda remember that I had to learn to write with my left, and it was almost as bad as my right. But, the, uh, but you know, your hands are very important. You realize how important your hands are whenever you can't use one of them. And, uh, but there are things that, that are very important. There are, there are parts of us that are very, very important that you can't even see. It's, I mean, you know, you can't see my liver, but you can't live without a liver. There's a lot of people today that are finding that out, that uh, you shouldn't abuse your liver, right, on New Year's. Uh, 
and finding out how important that liver is. But it, it, it's what I'm saying here. And, you know, we look at little parts of the body, things that don't seem to be significant to us. And I don't know, you know, uh, why I have an appendix, but we have it for a reason. Maybe it's because... Uh, sometimes you get appendicitis and you have to go to the hospital and have surgery witness to somebody at the hospital could be i don't know but every joint supplieth every part of the body is important even your little pinky toe and whenever one part of the body hurts it all hurts you don't believe me go outside take your shoes off and kick that brick out there with your pinky toe you'll find out just how important it is to you Every part. And what I'm saying to you is that, you know, in our kingdom, the least is the greatest. There is no, I'm so important and you're not. Every member of the body of Christ is critical and crucially important. There is no part. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. There's no part of our body that's an accident. And there's no part of the body of Christ that is an accident or is unimportant. Can you say amen? First Corinthians goes on to say that every part is important. The, uh, uh, if you go through an amputation, and, and my, uh, my uh, adopted son-in-law went through an amputation last week, and I was with him, and, and uh, he's going to be baptized pretty soon. He's going to be baptized as soon as he recovers. But I told him and I, and I told Carrie, I said, there's a grieving process that's much like grieving a death. Whenever you lose a part of your body because there's a part of that body that is cut off and there's a part of that body that dies. And you go through the same steps of grieving as you would go through as if you had a death. And the reason is, is because that part of the body is vitally important. And so... If you have a part of your foot cut off, it is dear to you. And you never realize how important that part of your foot is until you lose it. But you go through that process of grieving. And then you heal and you recover. And so, there's no, as members of the body of Christ, I want to establish that. And the devil likes to tell a lot of you. The enemy likes to, he talks in our ear all the time. I don't know how he does it, but he talks to me every day. I talk to God every day and and the devil. But he likes to tell you that you're not important. That what God has got for you, God really doesn't have anything for you in the kingdom. You're you're so unimportant. God doesn't have anything for you to do. You're you're just minuscule. That there's, there's no real job for you. But there is. Let me tell you something. You are very... God sees you. Don't you listen to that voice. The Lord sees you where you are. He knows how many hairs are on your head. And he, you are very important to Him. He loves you. You're very important to Him. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 2. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another... Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, say with me, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Wow. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what, what is it uh, but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up. Far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he's in us. He came 
to earth. He dwelt among us. Then he descended into the depths of the deep. He died on a cross. He bled. You have to understand that he bled his body. He exsanguinated his body. His body was bled dry of that precious blood. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. I, uh, a part of what I used to do is be a wound care specialist. And I can tell you that, you know, we used to have a lot of people come in with wounds on the side of their leg, perfectly round ones, call those vascular ulcers, because something caused that, the artery that fed that part of their leg to get clogged up. And they, that part of their leg would die. And so what we would do is we would go in and uh, clean that out. Then we would send them down the hallway to the cardiologist that would go in there and, and open that up with some stents, uh, peripheral stents, and would open that artery back up. And you know what? That leg would heal. That wound would heal because that, that blood was restored to that part of the body. Why do we have heart attacks? I'm not giving you an anatomy lesson here. Okay, but why do we have heart attacks? It's because the blood gets clogged up and can't get to the heart muscle. Whenever someone dies, the blood stops flowing. For whatever reason that they died, the blood stops flowing. And that is a signification. That's the reason that if you drop dead in here today, the first thing I'm going to do is pray on the way to you, and then I'm going to start pumping on your chest. And I'll be praying for you while I'm pumping on your chest. And then we'll get the defibrillator. And I'll ask Nurse Green to come and assist me. And we'll get that blood to pumping. We've done it more than once, haven't we? Uh, we'll get that blood to pumping back for you again. And, and guess what? You know what? We, we are, whenever we were born, we were born dead. We were born dead in our sins and our trespasses. We were born with a sin nature. You say, well, I was born innocent. No, you weren't. You were born with the Adam nature. And as soon as that blood flows over you, as soon as that spirit flows into you, you, are, you have a blood transfusion and you are brought to life. That quickening spirit, that blood that brings life. What does blood do in the body? Now that we understand the body, we are the body of Christ. How many of you are the body of Christ? Raise your hand. If you're not, you can be today. But the blood is what brings life to the body. And I want to talk about restoring the blood to the body of Christ because blood is life. Now, whenever you talk about the blood of Christ bringing life to the body of Christ, what is the blood? What is the essence of the blood? What, what, it, what does the, the blood of Jesus signify? Life, cleansing, all correct, but not what I'm looking for. Redemption, oh, we're getting warmer. What is the blood of Christ? Is that you, Justin? Man, you are on fire today. Mercy. The blood of Jesus is mercy. And whenever I am baptized, the reason we choose that He chose immersion in His blood for salvation is covers everything. It covers every sin you've ever committed. It washes it away as far as the east is from the west. Whenever you partake in His blood whenever you partake of His sacrifice. What we're doing today, this is not a ceremony. We are not doing some dead ceremony. 
He said, this is my blood. He didn't say this signifies my blood. He said, this is my body that was broken for you. This is my blood that was shed for you. This is the mercy that I have for you. It's mercy and it's grace. If you could define grace. No, mercy, what is mercy? Mercy is, Brother Tim, and I'm sure I have probably offended you in this last year at some point or another. And I'm asking you right now for your forgiveness. Will you have mercy on me? That's mercy. You know what grace is? Grace is his willingness to forgive me tomorrow. (laughs) For what I hadn't done to him yet. And and a lot of people, have they can conjure up some mercy, but the grace part, well, if they do it again, though, they do it to me one more time, and I'm not forgiving them. Fool me once. But you fool me twice and I'm done. The blood of Christ is both grace and it is true mercy. It has no memory. It washes away those crimson sins that stained us and makes us as white as snow. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. There's no joint that does not supply. I need mercy. How many of you need mercy? I need mercy every day that I live. And then you know what else I need? I need grace. For whenever I mess up the next time. I don't mean to mess up the next time. But sometimes I do. And you know what? Jesus stands by. Not only does he have mercy. The devil wants to tell you. If you do that one more time. God is not going to have anything to do with you. That is hogwash. That is a lie from the pits of hell. His blood. His mercy. His grace is sufficient for you. The only sin that the Lord will not forgive is the one that the devil has fooled you into believing that he won't. The only one that he will not forgive is the one that you will not repent of because you're convinced that I've gone too far. As a member of the body of Christ, I need his life-giving mercy. But I don't only need it for me. I don't just need it for me because, Brother Tim, you're the body of Christ too. Brother Dennis, Brother Ashton, Coach, Justin. I need it for me. I need it for me, but I'll tell you what. What if if my job... In the, in the body of Christ is the wrist. What if I'm somewhere here in the wrist? Okay? And you say, well, it's very important for me to have God's mercy and His grace. So important. But you know what? I don't really care about this hand guy over here. So I'm going to put a tourniquet. This is a really expensive tourniquet. But I, I'm going to put this tourniquet... Right here, the blood can flow to me. The blood can get down to the wrist. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. I need God's mercy. I need God's grace. I need God to be loving and kind and graceful and merciful to me. But I don't like that hand guy that I'm attached to over here. This hand has done all kinds of things you don't even know about. I'm tired of being attached to this hand. So the blood's got to flow through me to get to the hand. So we're just going to stop that flow. I want my mercy. I want my grace. 
but I don't want to pass it on to you. I want God to be merciful to me whenever I sin and I mess up and I fall short, which I do all the time. I don't mean to. There are sins of omission whenever you know to do right and you do it not. You need God's mercy because that is sin to you. If there is someone that walks up to me and needs a witness and I'm too busy, that's a sin to me. And I need his mercy. I need his grace every day. It is what gives me life. That blood that he shed for me, it gives us life. And I don't want to be the blood clot that shuts it off to you. I want to be, you know what I'd like to be? I'd like to be like a a big artery. I'd like to be the aorta, the guy that gets to carry all the mercy to everybody. Amen? That's what I want to be. I want to be a fountain of mercy to you. I want to receive mercy from him and pass it right along to you. I don't want to be that blood clot that shuts it down. Or maybe I'd like to be a stent for somebody whose the mercy's been shut off to them and they're dying. And you know what? Maybe it was me who shut it off. Maybe it was me who we had a problem and I had a problem forgiving and it caused a schism. It caused a blood clot in the flow. You know, I'd like to just stint that. I'd like to open that life flow back up. And I want to say that to each and every one of you. If I have offended you, I need your mercy and I need your grace. And we need to stint that and we need to open that flow up. So we both can live. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. And I want, this is the Bible that Linda and Deborah gave me. I preach out of it all the time. It's just about the only Bible I preach out of. It's an honor. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. That's good news. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Wow. So I can't, I cannot tourniquate his mercy to you and still receive it myself you see whenever you die i die whenever you hurt i hurt whenever one of us hurts we all hurt because we are connected together every joint supplies and the blood is what keeps us alive the blood the mercy the grace that flows from one of us to the other one that's what keeps us alive and it flows straight from his throne it flows all the way from the cross right here no matter what you've done I have to forgive you if I'm going to be forgiven myself is that what the book of Matthew just said well they never asked me to forgive them You know, I'd forgive them, but they never did ask me. So I'm just going to hold on to this, my bitterness because it's my right. They never asked me. Do you remember? I remember one time who was a very forgiving soul. And he happened to be hanging on a tree with blood in his eyes. And he could barely see out to the crowd. And he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And not a single one of them asked for it. Not a single one of them asked for his forgiveness. Not a single one asked for his grace. They were saying, crucify him. So if you have to be asked to forgive 
If someone's got to make it right with you, which, hey, that's wonderful when they do. But if you've offended me, and some of you have, you know what, I've, I have something, I've got something built into me through His Spirit. It's not of me, it's of Him called grace. I have already forgiven you. You don't have to ask me. I have already put it under the blood. I've already forgiven. That blood that flows through me from Him, I've already put it under the blood. If you have offended me, I don't care. You're forgiven. We're both free. And the blood keeps on flowing. I don't want to be the one who stops up the blood flow. There have been members, and I want, to, I want to get real serious here with you for just a minute. There have been members of this very assembly in the past, and I, will, I wouldn't tell you for a million dollars who they were. There are members of this assembly who have in the past who have come to me and said, I can't take communion because I just can't forgive. There's something in between me and somebody else and they've said something or they've done something to me and I can't forgive. So I can't, if I, if I take communion, I'm taking damnation unto myself and I can't do it. That's true. That is a true statement. You can't, you, if you hold something against someone else who is in the body of Christ and that's how you drink unworthily by the way and we're going to talk we'll read that in just a minute but that's how you drink unworthily is if you hold something at aught if you have some hatred some bitterness something that you can't forgive between one of your brothers and sisters and you take this holy sacrament you are drinking it to your own damnation you're eating it to your own damnation But I cannot imagine, I've been taking communion my whole life, I cannot imagine after Jesus breaking his body for me and shedding his blood for me, saying, no thanks, I'd rather hold on to my bitterness. I just can't forgive, there's something that somebody did, something somebody said, I'd rather hold on to my bitterness than to receive his body and his blood. Wow. Think about that for a minute. If you're in this house today and you're thinking, I don't know, I've kind of got some things going on. We're going to give you a minute here at, at, toward the conclusion of this service to pray, to forgive. You might need to make a phone call. You might need to text somebody. Please don't do it now. You might need to go across the aisle. But we're going to give you an opportunity to forgive. And if all you can do, it may be somebody who's dead that you need to forgive. I'm going to give you a minute to forgive. But don't hold on to that hatred. Don't hold on to that bitterness. Because you need mercy the same as they do. I remember, and you say, well, I think I'll wait till next year. I think I'll wait till next year. I, whenever I was uh, one of the directors of nursing with Baptist Health, one of my roles, I was the state director for heart attacks, otherwise known as STEMI. And uh, go into all that, but... Me, of all people, and I, I didn't have any CCU experience to speak of, but they tasked me with this task. They said, you know, it's taking about uh, three and a half hours, between three and three and a half hours on average, to get someone from the door of one of our regional hospitals to a cath lab. In a cath lab, if you don't know what that is, that's where they save your life. That's where if you've got a stopped up heart, they can unstop it. 
in just a few minutes. They can take you from literally you're going to die to you're going to live in just 15 minutes. And it was taking, it was taking a long time, too long, so my boss in her infinite wisdom, tasked me with the job of narrowing that down. And so we went through step after step. We had hundreds of meetings. And in a year's time, we took that uh, three-hour-long process from the door to the cath lab to 28 minutes statewide. Why did we do that? Because it's urgent. It is urgent to restore the blood flow or you will die. And I want to talk to you today for just a minute. If you can't forgive somebody, it is urgent to restore that flow of mercy into your life. Because if you can't forgive, you will die. It's urgent. You need to do it fast. You need to do it now. There's no time to waste. Hallelujah. I would ask you to not drink. I would ask every one of you to eat and to drink today, but don't do it unworthily. If you would stand with me, please. Father, we stand before you today in this very holy place with your holy people, with your body together. I pray, Lord God, that you would bless this holy thing that we're about to partake of, your body and your blood that was broken for us, that blood that was shed for us. We bless it today, Lord God, unto the nourishment of our souls, to the nourishment of our spirits, Lord God. Let us take in the unity of your body and let us take in that life-giving mercy and grace of your blood together today. Forgiving all in Jesus' name. Now, I want you to all spend a few minutes. If you need to forgive somebody, go forgive them. If not, just talk to your neighbor for a while. If you need to make a phone call, make a phone call. In about five minutes, we will take of the body and the blood of Christ together.
like to ask everyone that would like to like to participate in this communion service or in this the taking of the bread and the wine and, and if you have a concern it's the alcoholized wine it is real wine but it's had the alcohol molecules re- uh, removed and uh, it's kind of cool because we have like seven former addicts that are going to serve you the blood and the body of Christ today. Amen. I would ask everyone to please come up here and form two rows side by side. Two rows going all the way across the front. Three if there has to be three. I'd like to see everybody up here in unison and there's a reason behind this. And as you form your lines, Pentecostals don't know how to form lines very good. If you don't believe it, go to a restaurant. But if you, uh, yeah, facing me, facing me. And I'm going to come down there in just a minute. Everybody can stay right there. I'm going to come down and partake with you. There you go. Two lines. Two or three lines right across the front. Can we get everybody up here? Everybody come on up. Everybody come on up. If we have to come in toward the altars, come on up. Step up, step up. The front line, move up, move up. We need to have everybody here, everybody together. Let's get everybody in this, in this front section if we could. Even if we have to wrap around, uh, even if we have to wrap around the platform, I'd like to get everybody up here. And if we need to scoot over, well, let's scoot over. But everybody, and whether you're a member of this church or whether you're not, if you're a member of the body of Christ, you're welcome to partake of this. And so, all right. Gentlemen, if y'all would begin to, and please, no one partake until asked to do so. Thank you. Please, no one partake until we do it together. And especially, don't drink until I ask you to, please. And there's a reason for this. When everyone has been served, please let me know. Y'all move among the crowd serving everyone. And uh, actually, I'd because I need to be right here. I'd like to have some people come up here with me and stand beside me and wrap around. The family, friends, brothers, sisters. Like to have, would like to have my boys here and others. Others, doesn't matter who you are, even if I don't know you. Just come right up here and let's wrap all the way around this platform. Mom, Dad, would y'all come up? Would y'all help Mom up here? I'd like to have her up here. Mom and Dad, please come up here. Y'all come up here. Just make this whole, we can make this whole platform. have not been served, raise your hand if you'd like to be served and haven't. Everybody come on in close. Everybody come in close. Come on in close. Man, I love you guys. This is, this is what the body of Christ what's up, man? What the body of Christ looks like right here.
Has everyone been served? Is there anyone not been served? Raise your hand. feel the spirit of God in this place has everyone been served I want to make sure everyone's been served everyone be served and when he took the bread and he gave thanks and break it and he gave it to them saying this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me now I want you to please eat that's good isn't it cooked it myself me and some other folks no one drink please Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Can you say the New Testament in my blood? Which is shed for you. Now, I want you to understand something. I want you to look. I should all hold the, the wine out in front of you right now. I want you to listen to this. I don't want you to miss this. I want you to look at this wine. I want you to look at it. Right now, you're holding the essence, the essence of the most valuable substance in the universe. The blood, the mercy, and the grace of God. You're holding that essence, the most precious thing that you could ever imagine. What He died to give you in your hand right now. Now, before we drink, I'm going to ask you to hand it to the one next to you. Hand it this direction. I received mercy and I gave mercy. You received mercy and you gave it. And the blood flows. Let us drink together. Father, we receive your mercy. We receive your life. We receive the blood, the sacrifice that was made for us. And we give it away. The most precious of all things, we receive it and we give it away. Make within us a new heart heart of flesh. A heart that will pump that blood of Christ into everyone we know. Give us that, take from us that heart of stone that cannot forgive and place within our chest that heart of flesh full of grace and full of mercy to all people. Make us not just vessels of your grace and mercy, but conduits of it. So it might not only be poured into us, but it be poured through us and go out to everyone. We receive it, Lord God, in your name. Jesus mighty name you know what's even better we have a baptism right now amen so y'all stay put stay put
Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord and everything, rejoice. And when you're done rejoicing, rejoice some more because another soul has stepped within the kingdom. All of heaven is rejoicing this morning. So why don't we just lift a hand to him and let's just rejoice in him. Lord, we love you today. Lord, thank you for what you have done within us today. Lord, the touch that you have given us. 
Lord, that we fulfill a part of your body today, Lord. Lord, we love you today. Hallelujah. We ask that you move and touch today. Bless each family. Going into this year, Lord, give us, establish our steps, O oh God. Lord, let us see your steps before we even move. Lord, bless each family and each, everyone that is here today. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You're just.